going. So go ahead. Oh my God, yay. So I'm so excited to introduce, we are here with Janice Dean. She's the senior meteorologist for Fox News and Fox Weather. And this very moment, she's celebrating 20 years with Fox. Janice, you've covered storm after storm. I mean, I can only imagine what you've seen, what you've experienced. Break down a little bit some of the highlights from your career. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> that sounds your life. Phyllis, like, you can stop in 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Four hours. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? I, so I started 20 years ago. That's 2004, January. Um, and we actually kicked off a pretty wintry season, I remember. You know, yeah. my first day on air, I think I was covering a big winter storm that uh, hit the Northeast in the New York City area. So just right from there. And then a uh, year after that was Hurricane Katrina, which is mm -hmm. so, and it was the worst hurricane season on record. We went to the Greek alphabet. I remember, I mean, it was just, um, it was devastating, but also, um, you know, a moment where I was like, is this what it's going to be like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> like nonstop. Yeah. Um, you know, a pretty big winter storms. I think I covered both the first time New York city hit the highest snowfall total. I think it was like 22 feet, definitely. Yeah. And then a, wow. a couple of years later, another round, uh, we actually topped that. Yeah. So that was within a, you know, just a couple of years. Um, but, a, you know, big hurricanes, a lot of devastating tornadoes. Um, the thing I remember the most about covering severe weather is after the storm, that's when you see the best in humanity. Yeah. Um, people helping neighbors. Um, and that's what I always like to remind people of. It's obviously terrible to see what happens after a storm. Yeah. But when you see people helping others, that's what life is all about. And that's what I remember the most. Janice, do you... I've always heard that in the world of like breaking news, when there's bad weather, like ratings go up, like bad weather is the thing that drives. Has that been your experience over the years with like your, like the, 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 the actual on the ground physical uh, reporting that you've been doing, mm. is that been some of the highest rated stuff? Well, I remember Hurricane Katrina being right. one of the highest rated events that we ever covered. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember when that storm exploded in the Gulf of Mexico within just a few hours and it was overnight. Yeah. You know, you woke up the next day, it was a category five mm -hmm. and you just knew how devastating this event was going to be. I remember being on the air with Geraldo uh, at 10 p.m. that night and just knowing that this was going to kill people. Yeah. And so to have to deliver news that this was going to potentially be a catastrophic event, which we all knew, yeah. but also trying not to, uh, you know, s scare people so much. It was, it's a fine line that you kind of walk. But in answer to your question, you know, big weather events, any big news event is always going to generate more viewers. Mm -hmm. But I always take my job very seriously in that it's my job to warn as many people and to make sure I'm giving the best forecast that I can give so that, you know, we're trying to save lives really. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Reed could speak to this. Mm -hmm. He goes out there in, in crazy, uh, a crazy environment, but your ultimate goal is to make people aware of severe weather and to show them what mother nature is capable of. Certainly. Yeah. <clears throat> as well as just to intercept the tornado to begin with and record. Yeah. Too. What is your favorite type of storm? Mm -hmm. yeah. is it a winter oh. storm, hurricane? I'm going to say a winter storm because I'm from Canada. And uh, I remember growing up, you know, seeing snow, the, the height of my rooftop. <laughs> I've got a, a picture yeah. of that. And ever since I can remember the first snowfall event going out and doing a snow angel to this day, I'll be 54 this year. I will always go out and do a snow angel no matter how old I am. <laughs> uh, as long as I can get that get up afterwards or at least have help. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, you know, I respect the people that are out in the storm, like Reed and the reporters that go out to the tornado like locations or hurricanes. For me, I would rather be in the studio and tell people to stay inside. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's my role. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like I'm also sort of the mother hen <laughs> of Fox. Like I'll tell a reporter, I've done it on air. If they're too close to an area where there's water that's going to be rising, yeah. I'll stay on air. Like, please go to higher ground. Yeah. You know, no live shot is worth really 
risking your life if you don't know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's always been my role. And Fox has been very um, respectful of that. Yeah, They've never good. said to me, we want you to go cover this because the ratings will be higher if you're out there right, right. holding on to a signpost. Uh, so, but so come on, that's a cool shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not yeah. to say, it's not to say that I don't see Reed and go, go Reed. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that he is somebody that's going to take his safety into account. I, I never worry about that with somebody like you because I just know that you're doing everything. Safety is my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> so you All right, wait, am I living in an alternate <laughs> universe? I'm fine with being the mother. He's the baby doesn't use though. You do such a good job, Jan. You really do. Oh, well, I appreciate that. But winter storms definitely. So this one was a big one for me being at Mount Washington. Was it a single storm that got you on the path? Mm. Was it well, I did a little bit backwards. I, you know, I've always been interested in weather. I was always good in science and math in school. Um, I went down that broadcasting road. I took uh, radio, television, broadcasting back home in Canada. Um, but uh, and I worked at a classic rock station for my the first job outside of my career. But I was also doing weather on the side. And at the time, 30 something years ago, you didn't need the education that you need now to be right now. I, I took broadcast meteorology while I was at uh, while I was at Fox because I knew that this was going to be my career. But I always sort of had the love of weather in the background and always kind of did part time weather during my career. And then when I knew that this was going to be uh, what I was going to be doing full time at Fox, then I went back to school, like a lot of broadcast meteorologists do with their yeah. wonderful broadcast uh, program shout, at Mississippi, to where? Mississippi State. Yeah. 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 And I, I love what they do. Uh, and I always say that you can be the smartest person in the room and know every equation associated with you know, every meteorological uh, phenomenon out there. But if you can't deliver the message to the public, yes. then oh. you're kind of doing a disservice, right? And that's not to say there are a brilliant meteorologists out there, but I think for broadcast meteorology, you really have to like connect with your audience. And I'm not somebody who likes to throw around fancy terms. Yeah. I just try to break it down as easily as I can. And I, and that's smart. That's how they teach you. And it's, Brilliant. You do such a good job. Well, so, I, so I have to know. Yeah. You, we talked about like 20 years. Usually in this line of work, you bounce around a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. you, so what is the secret? What has kept you at Fox for 20 years where most Very people, question. you know, wouldn't have, don't find a place in land like that? That's a good question. It is the environment that I'm in. And I, that's not to say, listen, I wrote about it in a book a few years ago called Mostly Sunny. Uh, it's not to say that I didn't go through a, a, a rocky period at Fox. We all know some of the history behind uh, the some people that are no longer there. Mm -hmm. uh, I was subjected to an abusive boss, uh, and I talked about that. I was very open about that, but I was also able to navigate that so that it never got to a point where I felt unsafe in my work environment. But when I did find out that there were others going through something, I thought it was important to speak up about my experiences, which had happened at the beginning of my career. Um, so, but having said that, for the most part, we are really a family there. There's always going to be dysfunction in a family, and there certainly has <laughs> been in the past. Um, but they have always been very uh wonderful with me. And I've gone through challenges in my life that they have helped me with. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2005. Uh, and that was my own personal storm that I went through. And they were very supportive in me coming out and using Fox to be a platform to talk about somebody living with a chronic illness. Yeah. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made. And I'm just so grateful for Fox to say, Absolutely, we support you. And however you want to talk about this, if you want to, feel free to. Um, and and I think looking back on those 20 years, the greatest thing, one of the greatest things I ever did was was talking about a diagnosis like that because it helped so many people. I still have people come up to me and say, um, you know, my mom, my brother, someone I, you know, family member or my wife, my brother, they saw you doing what you do and and still up there and that really inspired me or whoever in their family. So that's, that's been very important. 
uh, Janice, I'm wondering too, like for other people in that position, and I've been there too, the best advice you can give somebody if they're in that position where you're like, it's somewhat toxic, do you just raise your voice? Because you said you navigated it, but instead of just saying, fine, I'm leaving, mm -hmm. and you going, when you want to just, when you want to be there, that's your job. It depends because you know what? The job before Fox was a very toxic environment. I worked for Don Imus for a year. I read that in your book. Yeah. And that was really a really an environment that I knew I could not thrive in. And I, I got out. And That's so a good point. You couldn't thrive in it. Yeah. That's a good point. With Roger, Roger Ailes, who we're talking about at Fox, there was, listen, my throughout my whole career, I think a lot of women can say this. You've had moments where you're like, is he hitting on me or is this something different with him? I always thought it was kind of a jokey thing. And I was always able to laugh it off and say, you know, I have a boyfriend, that kind of thing, but it's not something that I had never not dealt with in my career. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that now we're more aware of me too issues and that kind of thing. So my best advice is I told girlfriends, uh, I, I told people I worked with. And so when I finally did, come out and talk about my experience. I had already documented it or talked about it with other people. So I think that's my number one thing is if you don't feel comfortable going to HR, which by the way, you should feel comfortable going to HR. That's the one thing I, I think has changed in the environment, mm -hmm. especially Fox. Now you can phone a 1-800 number and be totally anonymous now and say, I'm having this issue and not feel like you're, you know, you're in a room under a spotlight. Um, I think the best thing you can do is tell another person, you know, document it. And nowadays you really should tell someone higher up about the situation and you should never feel, um, that that's going to come back and haunt you somehow. Good advice. So, yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Janice, I, I have a question too about like people that are looking to get into broadcast meteorology, yeah. whether it's coming out of college or young professionals. I feel like, and I'm, you know, you know this, right? The industry the last 20 years has changed pretty dramatically. A lot of social media, stuff like that. What advice do you give to people that are looking to get into broadcast meteorology and, and thinking about like, you know, how to get to where you are? Because I feel like you're at the pinnacle, right? And that's kind of where everyone strives to be. Mm. What advice would you give to those, to those folks? You know, listen, I never... You know, 20 years ago, if you said to me, what are you going to be doing 20 years from now? I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. I knew that I wanted to do something in broadcasting, being able to deliver a message. Um, but I didn't quite know what that was going to be. Um, so I think for me, I, I tried all sorts of different things. I was a producer. I wrote the news. I did the news. I um was a DJ. And even though you look at that and you kind of laugh. Wait, did you have a DJ name? For you, like, no, I was DJ Janice Dean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did awesome. so many different, it's, um, it's JD the it's DJ. JD. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I did a lot of different uh, genres of music. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. But when I go back and I think about my career, it was really my uh, experience in radio that mm -hmm. helped me because you're able to tell a story without having pictures. So yeah. you're able to actually, you know, a tell um, a story and someone has to uh, use their imagination. Yeah. So I, my advice to somebody that's getting into the broadcast world, if it's broadcast me meteorology, you know, certainly get the education, but also do different jobs so that you have an appreciation for what everybody else does. Like my producer, Sam, I've done that job before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been a camera person, uh, but I have organized shoots yeah. before. Yeah. So that way, you know, you kind of know everybody's place and job and you appreciate them more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also here's my other big lesson. Every job I've ever gotten was not because I handed somebody a resume. It was because someone was trying to help me out or, or, um, you know, I met somebody and they said, for instance, the Imus job, I met a makeup artist at WCBS in New York where I was working part-time doing the traffic. Uh, and, and she said, you know, I can bring your tape over to Fox. I work over there. So a makeup so artist awesome. over at WCBS mm. brought my tape over to Fox. And it's not to say that you ha you can't, you have to, because you have to prove yourself, yeah. Yeah. but you never know where that next job is going to come that's from. Point, yeah. And I think that if you're a generally a nice person and you're good to other people, mm -hmm. that's going to come back to you. I think the meteorology world is a very small world. Like yeah. It's yeah. the seven degrees of separation, like yeah. we all know each other yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. And somebody knows us who knows you and 
I, and the word gets around if you're not the nicest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and How I, do you feel about social media? Mm, like, and and kind of how yeah, television is transitioning. Yeah. Trolls oh, on streaming platforms. There and, have been lots of trolls on social media. Are you guys required to deliver content to social media at Fox? Or are you no, we aren't. Um, and that's kind of been great. They've kind of let us navigate that world. I like social media. I think there's more... Um, positives than negatives, even though sometimes I'll put myself out there and, and, you know, you get some incoming and you're like, mm, do I, do I say something or just leave this one alone? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think it helps. Um, you know, you use it in a very positive way. Um, you know, the stuff that I did up at Mount Washington, it's like, you want to share it. You want to, you know, so cool. show yeah. other people what you're yeah. doing yeah. and also to promote places like Mount Washington mm -hmm. that deserve to have a spotlight on them. Yeah. Yeah. So the stuff that I can't per say do it in three minutes on Fox News, I can do that on social media by saying, "Here's the website you can go to," or "Here are all the people that you know help make this happen." So I, I like it. I, I do tend to like social media. Do you but also do a lot with Fox Weather? Starting to, yes, yeah, yeah. But like, like anything else, it can. I, I, I try to do it in my husband will get mad at me if I'm at home mm -hmm. and I'm like doing it too much. Yeah. Right. Cause we all say to our kids, get off the iPad. Oh, right. And, then, and they're like, but you mom, what are you doing right now? So I have to sort of like, if it's work and I'm doing work right now, then I'm going to do it. But if I'm at home, I try to put it away a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a studio or like a, like a setup and like green screen at home? I did during there? COVID. Yeah. Yes. Through, uh, for, over a year, I was doing weather from home. So they put a home studio and it was just very recently that we took the home studio. That's probably hard to disconnect, right? They're like, yeah. hey, you going for a live shot? You're home. You know? Well, it's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they would ask me sometimes at night, like, can you do this? Not necessarily weather, but can you do something with a, a show? Um, and I would, um, but then I, tr I do try to separate it a little bit. And I think with COVID, we really got used to working from home and then we didn't have that separation between mm -hmm. our, our work and then our home life. And I think it's important to have that balance. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. yeah we got to set some limits. We do. Yeah. 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 I, said, though, I have a question for you. So throughout your career, what's the longest that you've stayed awake covering a storm or like stayed overnight in the studio? Mm. Do you have any kind of crazy stories about that? Well, you know, <laughs> Let's see, Hurricane Sandy, yeah. because that was uh, affecting yeah. my area. Yeah, and my husband's fireman, so that was a big balance because my kids were young, and I actually stayed to to cover Hurricane Sandy from pretty much the beginning through the middle and the end. So I was in the city for several days, wow. and Sean was also working with the fire department, so we had to call on neighbors to help and that kind of thing. So when you say you know overnights and all that kind of thing. That that's the storm that I think about the ones that are in your neighborhood, yeah. and then you know you have to try to get home or not get home or yeah. so that one I I you know and hurricane season is certainly busy but now that we have Fox weather we have a lot of meteorologists now that are that are able to sort of fill those gaps that at the beginning twenty years ago I was the very first on air wow. meteorologist well, not at the time but on air presenter at the time when I was there they I was the first one that they'd hired to do the weather. Yeah. So I have, I have one more question, uh, but the question's for Phil initially. <laughs> Phil, has Janice been on our show more than any other guest? She, this, this will be her fourth, fourth? Wow. official wow. time on an, epi an actual episode. Wow. Yeah. So, 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 so that that ties now for the most of any, and, and so we're going to have a jacket for the five timer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So here's, here's my question then, Janice. Like, here we are with this, you know, uh, like both of our followers. Uh, <laughs> really, really thank you. But, it, like, what a cool thing. <laughs> no, but seriously, what a cool thing. You, you know, you've got this high profile, you know, network job, and you take the time cool. to join a, a group of people like this, obviously, with similar interests. But that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Cool. And, like that's uh, I don't know if we would get that from anyone. So Aww. I think that that's pretty. Like I don't. There's no question here. I just want to say it. Like that's pretty. Well, awesome. you guys have always been nice to me, and so I think that you know you you. Why wouldn't I? 
you know, I remember the first time you reached out and I was like, of course, that's cool. So the, the one question everybody's got, like everyone's really, really, uh, nobody's been, everyone's been afraid to ask, um, where are you from in Canada? <laughs> uh, this is going to get political. Uh, I always say uh, the only red and blue I see on a map are areas of high pressure. Oh. So, so where in Canada? Okay, born in Toronto, and I grew up in Ottawa. I grew up in Ottawa. Stop! I just left Ottawa yesterday morning. Is that true? true. Yeah. Did we not know this? Listen, what high school did you go to? Confederation High School. Oh, boo. <laughs> I, I, went, yeah. I went to Brookfield. Okay. And uh, did we, is it possible that we may have dated? As, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's all coming back to me. You haven't asked me this before. Yeah, and almost. I think we've done the research, and the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> okay so I've, I've got one more question, and I'm, I'm going to throw it back at you because you'd ask me a question your podcast yep. that I'm just throwing right back at you. What's your plan uh, 20 years now into Fox? What's your plan moving ahead and forward oh. this next year or beyond? Well, you know what? This was a really good example of you're never too old to try different things or go different places. Yeah. That's I mean, I'm going to be 54 this year. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Where does Shannon's yeah, <laughs> go girlfriend. You too. I know, but we didn't date. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. She said no, um, Greg. But you know, for instance, like I went to the top uh, when they where they do the the weather observations. The even top of the tower. Yes, the top of yeah. the tower. And I mean, I climbed those stairs, and I was up there looking, you know, down below, and I thought right on this is awesome and i'm going to continue to do this as long as i possibly can um and i'm grateful that fox lets me do this now that we have fox weather you know they seem to be very interested in these kinds of stories and i feel like this is kind of more of more of what i want to do like, not yeah. to take away from fox and friends because i love that in the morning but i do love to go out and experience more things and i think you yeah. know as we get older maybe mortality is on on our mind more Bucket lists are a thing. Yes. Yeah. We gotta do these things. It's on the bucket list. Yeah. Do you have another bucket list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, Reed? I gotta say. So I wrote I wrote a Freddie the Frogcaster book about tornadoes. And, yeah. and Reed was my inspiration for Tad Polar. <laughs> <laughs> so he was the storm chaser. <laughs> Yes, you have to read it because, like, Reed was. Who start Reed's new nickname? Yeah, Tad Polar. Um, it is Tad wow. Polar, isn't it? I think what it is. Name. But anyway, um, and I, I, you know, because I know you, and I would do that. I probably would do that. So I take it back. I would, if if it was you, I would not be the mama hen, and I would go out and put my freak on. Oh. <laughs> So episode 300. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to do a live spot from uh, Hurricane Hunter. Oh, that, I would do that too. I would do that. Yes. You won't be able yes. to hear the show. <laughs> yeah. No, I've always said I would go up in a Hurricane Hunter. Okay. Yeah. I, like yeah, as long as I feel that there there are people that want to be safe and are doing safe things, I would definitely do that. You know, but but to stand out like you know when a category four five is like on your doorstep and it's not as dangerous as it looks thank you for having me you're about to have a really great um time and i just want to thank you guys too because bill you were the one that you know put this into motion Ooh, and cool. you know yeah. i really appreciate that cool. yeah Thank See? you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Tad Polar. Tad Polar.